Good morning, Crossing family. My name is Jai. I'm the student pastor here at The Crossing, uh, and welcome to my humble abode away from home, my office. Um, last week, we started this series called Calm, uh, because if you're like me, many of us are feeling anything but calm right now. Uh, and even if you find yourself in a calm moment, man, things can go from calm to chaos like that. Uh, for me, I was literally sitting at my dining room table and I had a bag of gumballs and I spilled it all over the floor. And I know that seems really small, but on top of everything else that's going on in life right now, it was, it was big to me. Um, so I don't know what it's been for you, but maybe comment down below. Like if you had something this week or in the last few weeks that's just been your calm to chaos moment, was it a text from somebody or something, a health crisis that came up, I don't know what it is, but just comment down below and let us all feel like, hey, we're, we're all normal going through this uh, together. So look, I don't know where this morning's message is going to find you. Uh, if you're a follower of Jesus and you're worried and anxious, my prayer is that this message would be a pathway from some of this chaos to, to peace and how some, some practical steps of how we can get from chaos to calm and those things that we can do. Or, or maybe this morning you're not a follower of Christ. And my prayer is that for you, we can begin to see Jesus as more than just a get into heaven free ticket, that he's a savior that, that cares about us right here, right now and everything that we're going through. Uh, this series has been loosely based off a book by Max Lucado called Anxious for Nothing. And it's really, it's kind of broken up into four parts, which is why we have four weeks. And it, it runs through this acrostic, CALM, C-A-L-M. And last week, Kenny talked about the C, which was celebrate. And this week, I'm talking about the A, which is ask. So, Again, it's, it's based off the book Calm, but it also it really focuses in on Paul's letter to the church in Philippi. And specifically in chapter 4, he has these, these verses, and he's sitting in prison, and he writes these words in, in verse 6. And it says, don't worry about anything. And some of us can't even get past that statement if we're, if we're being honest with ourselves. Like, and I get it, because we're like, wow, Paul. You're that friend, right? You're the friend who sees everything that I'm struggling through right now. And your solution is, don't worry about anything. And you're like, really? Like, like, it's just a light switch. I can just switch off and on. And it, no, it just, it doesn't work like that. Like our, our worries and our concerns right now, they're legitimate. Like, they're very real. Like, I know we joke that our grandparents were, were, were called to war and we've been called to sit on our couch and watch Netflix. But no, it's real. Everything that we're going through right now is real. Like, homeschool. I'm homeschooling my kids right now. And let's just say that if my wife goes back to work, my kids are toast. Like, that's a very real concern and worry in our house right now is what happens if she goes back to work? I have to do it. They're in trouble. Um, or maybe it's it's full-time work. Maybe those of you are, are going out and you're working full-time somewhere and you're, the risk that you're taking is very real and feels very real. Um, or for some of us, are we're working from full-time from home and homeschooling at the same time. And the pressure that that puts on us um, maybe some of you are feeling the worry of a job loss, or maybe it's just the fact that, look, you've, you've filed for unemployment and it just says pending. That's, that's where my family is sitting right now with my wife's job. It just says pending. We don't have any answers. It's a very real concern. Or some of you, there's, there's a food struggle that you, there's not food to get your hands on, or, or it's a struggle to get out and get it, and the stress that that takes, or, or I know that I've, domestic violence, things that are taking place at homes, I've got a lot of friends that are teachers that are talking about how worried they are for their students that are not normally home this amount of time, that are not home, and, and there's a struggles that are taking on place with there, and they're worried about them, and or honestly, even when it comes down to masks, like, I, I mean, I remember the very first time that I wore one of these masks out in public, it didn't give me any less anxiety. As a matter of fact, it actually gave me more worries. And I get the added benefit of fog because when you wear glasses and a mask at the same time, this is what happens. Um, and so it's, it's, 
So literally, I'm walking around the grocery store, sometimes blind by all this fog that's going on in my mask. So if I bump into you at Kroger, I'm sorry. Just ignore me and keep on walking. Oh, that's just Jai. Let me go. All right. Um, but this this worry this that we're feeling right now, it's it's very normal. It's something, it's concerns, it's it's like we're feeling it. And if you're feeling it, it's normal. Um, and Paul writes, though, he says, don't worry about anything. But Paul didn't stop at don't worry about anything. Like he went on to write, this is what it says. He says, don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. It says, you see, there's, there's the ask. He's just saying, hey, present your request to him. Talk to him. He says, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So see, we've, we've got the worries. They're real. We want the peace that God is saying. It, it surpasses all understanding. This is what we want. We don't want the worry. But Paul says it's through prayer is how we access it. Like this is how we pass through and get to the peace that we want is through prayer. But if you're like me, though, you might be thinking, uh-oh. Like, <laughs> my prayer life sometimes is not the best, or it's or it's severely underwhelming compared to other people. Uh, and so you're like, maybe this is maybe this is what your prayer life looks like. Um, I found these different memes. That, that pretty much can represent mine sometime, and maybe it's you as well. It says, please, God, don't let me see any more sales because you know I'm weak, right? Like I went to order a pair of glasses, and now all I see on Facebook is more sales for glasses, and I'm like, well, should I get more? Do I get more? I don't, I don't know. Um, or anytime me and my wife literally talk about anything, guess what pops up for sale on Facebook? That. <laughs> you know, it's like Big Brother's watching and listening, I'm telling you. Um or here's one for all the all my single friends and my teenagers that are watching, right? It says, she held my hand in the prayer circle. So I guess you can say things are getting pretty serious, right? Like, hey, not all of our prayer life is deep. I know you're, you're there, all right? Um, or maybe, it's, maybe some of you have prayed this this week. It says, please, God, save the world from the idiots. I don't know if you've prayed that this week. I might have. Maybe don't comment below about any of that, all right? Um, or this one definitely meets me where I'm at. Uh, God bless the donuts, that they would nourish and strengthen our bodies. For me, it'd be cronuts, but we'll, we'll take donuts. I'm good with all that. Or this, is, this one meets like every small group right now. Uh, it says, who'd like to offer the closing prayer? Don't move. She can't see us if we don't move. Or maybe it's like the convenient time for your Wi-Fi just to drop out and you, you end out of the Zoom call. Or for my small group, it's like literally like nose goes, right? Like nobody wants to offer the closing prayer. Um, I don't know what it is. It's, it's just like all joking aside, we struggle with prayer. I was on staff at a mega church at one point in time. It was literally two, 3,000 people and we called something a prayer service and 100 people showed up. I was like, I instantly learned if I want people to show up, don't title something prayer. Like that shows something that's inside of our hearts, inside of our minds that we struggle. I think just many of us, we feel inadequate, like in our prayer life, um, unsure of what to say or how to do it. Uh, or maybe it's just the idea of being overwhelmed by talking to God. I mean, the all knowing, all powerful God of the universe and like, how do you have a conversation with, with that? Um, but the good news is, we are not the first ones to struggle with this. I mean, Luke in Luke 11, we see this as one day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. Uh, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Like, the disciples were the guys who did life with Jesus. Like, every day, walked around with him, watched him do life. And one of the very few things that they ever asked him how to do was how to pray better. Um, like, can we just take a moment and just feel better about our inadequate prayer life when the guys who walked with Jesus felt like their prayer life wasn't good enough? Um, like, I... I think it's okay for us to just feel like, hey, we don't know how to do this very well, but we can go and we can learn. 
and we can stretch ourselves and just just give our per- ourselves permission to start today and say, okay, this is where I'm at. I want to grow in this. I want to get better in my prayer life. And then that's what happens. Like Jesus just goes on and he teaches them. He begins to teach them how to pray. And it says in verse 2, it says, He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. It says, Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. See, there's, there's parts that can be tough in prayer. Right? Like praying, Father, your kingdom come means my kingdom has to go. And that's a struggle because I'm selfish. Deep down, I'm selfish. So for me to say, God, your kingdom come, like, God, maybe you haven't taught me everything in this moment and that we're going through with COVID-19 yet. My kingdom says, I'm done. Like, can I go about my life and do my normal stuff again? Like, I'm, I'm just frustrated. I'm done with that. But God's saying, maybe there's still something I need to teach you through this. And you've not got it all figured out. And that's, that's hard to pray. So again, there's in prayer, there's the hard things. Like there's a, a, a spiritual maturity that's happening through the process. And that is a part of it. There is deep parts. But then there's also just very conversational parts that God's looking for. Like God just wants to talk to you about your daily needs. He wants to talk with you. And like if you look through that prayer again, and again, there's just the normal everyday struggles of, of us learning to stop sinning. Stop doing the things that, that aren't pleasing to God or, or asking for, for us to forgive other people. And we know how tough that is uh, just to forgive somebody and, or to ask him to God, hey, guide me, guide me away from this temptation that I'm struggling with. Like these are very real everyday issues that, that we're going through. And God just wants to, to talk to us about these things. And I, I really think that this is what Paul's getting at when he says everything from our Philippians verse earlier. This is what he says, right in verse 6, he says, in everything, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Like, God just wants a conversation with us. That's what he wants. He wants to talk with us. And then we, we, we know how important communication is. Like you've seen, you've had communication struggles with a coworker or with your kids this week or with your spouse this week. Like you, you know how important conversation is. And God just says, hey, I want to talk with you about everything. I want to communicate. So are you, are you cleaning the house this week? Talk with him while you clean. It's just an ongoing conversation. Maybe you're decluttering the basement. It's where I need to be this week. I can talk to him while I do those things. Very regular things. He just wants to talk with us. I know, I remember a, a prayer that I specifically prayed and just talked with God through uh, several years ago. I was actually, uh, there was the very first time that I was going to fly with my daughter, Lucy, by myself. And she was a baby. She was an infant. Uh, and she's now nine. But I this, again, shows you how vividly I can still remember some prayers uh, from my past and so we we get checked in for our flight and we're walking, you know, down the, the terminal to, to go about and find where we're gonna board and 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 she begins to poop. Now, obviously we all know this is normal for an infant to do this, and so I took her to the bathroom and I cleaned her up and we went back out to, to sit down and, and wait for our plane to get there and no joke, a few minutes later she poops again. And I'm like, oh man, so go back to the bathroom clean her up. And I'm like, I'm thinking in my mind, this is, this is kind of running. <laughs> this is, I may be in an oh no situation. And this is exactly what happens. It begins to play out more and more where she just keeps pooping, like to the point where I find myself in the bathroom at the airport and I'm praying this prayer. I'm like, God, you either multiply this last diaper that I have or you get this child to stop pooping. Like, this is my prayer life right now. And I was like, we still have a two-hour flight to go, and I don't know what I'm going to do. And I swear that in that moment, he must have answered my prayer because Lucy fell asleep, and she was asleep the entire plane ride. God just wants to talk with us. He just wants us to be real. He wants us to be ourselves. He doesn't need these lofty, big, huge religious words. He just wants to be a part of our life. He wants to have a conversation. And see, because 
This is where religion differs from relationship. Like, religion says, I messed up. Oh my gosh, God's going to kill me. But a relationship says, I've messed up. Oh my gosh, I've got to talk to my father. You see the huge difference in that. And that's God didn't come for religion. He didn't give you life to give you religion. He gave you life because he loves you and he wants a relationship with you. When this whole COVID-19 thing started, I'll be honest to admit that I was struggling. I was frustrated. I vented a lot <laughs> to God and to my family. Um, but what made all the difference was when I stopped venting and I started praying. Because the huge shift it took for me is I realized that I didn't need other people's sympathy near as much as I needed God's strength. Um, so you might be thinking, well, that's great, Jai. Like, where do I start? Like, do I simply close my eyes and just begin to talk to him? Yeah, that's, that's an easy place to start. That's the good place to start. Um, or maybe you just open up, do I just open up the book of Luke and go back to chapter 11 and read through the Lord's Prayer? Like you said, yeah, you can do that. You can just begin to read scripture and, and, and that's the Spirit prays that for you to God and talks to him. Like I know some people do that, but I, I want to even, maybe, maybe now's the perfect time to even be, get creative beyond that. Because if you're anything like me, like you can start there, but then that can even become stale. Like I know I went through a time in Bible college where I realized the only time I was praying was when I sat down to eat. And that was it. And so for me, I felt like I was stuck. So I literally stopped praying every time I ate and I started to create new ways. I, I got to pray. I'm going to talk to God while I do this. I'm going to talk to God while I do this. And began to change things up and, and do that again. So I want to get a little bit more creative. But I know that I'm not the only creative person in the world. So many more of you are are way more creative than I am. So if you've if you've been creative in prayer or if you've in, engaged with God in, in different ways, would you comment down below? Like, just help us come up with new ways that we can engage in our conversation with God on an, on an everyday basis. What have you been doing? Um, so I have a few more just that I've written down that we can walk through. Uh, one was, was prayer journaling that, hey, it, it doesn't have to be fancy. Maybe you just have a notebook laying around. Maybe you have some post-it notes. Like you could start today or you could start tomorrow and just say, hey, day one. And just begin to write down some things that you're praying about, some things that you want to talk to God about. It's like your letter to him and you're just writing those out. And the super cool thing about praying through a journal is that you can look back on those prayers a week from now, a month from now, a year from now. And it's so cool because you can see how God was working throughout your prayer life and he was working in your life and what was taking place during those those circumstances. So if you haven't prayer journaled before, I highly recommend it. Um, another one's prayer partners. That maybe, maybe you just need a prayer partner. Like begin to talk with somebody. Hey, I'm going through this. This is what's this is how my work's reopening. This is what my life is going through. This is what homeschooling my kids is like. And you just begin to talk to each other and then then pray about those things, like together. You can do Zoom, you can do it on a phone call, however you want to do it, just begin to talk about those things. Like, so who would it be for you? Maybe you start to talk to God right now, say, God, bring bring some people to mind that I can trust, that I can be honest with and, and share these things with. Um, maybe for you, maybe it's a prayer walk. Maybe that's where you can be creative. Or, or if you don't live in a neighborhood, maybe it could be a prayer drive, like just you don't close your eyes. That could be awkward and dangerous. Uh, but maybe you just walk out your front door, walk down the sidewalk, and you see a neighbor's house, and you could stop right there. Or if you don't want to look like, you know, somebody who's stalking them, you could keep walking while you do it. But just, just pray. Pray over that house. Say, God, I know that I don't know what's going on in that home, but you do. And they're my neighbor. And I'm supposed to care about them like you care about them. And just begin to pray over that home as you walk through or pray over your neighborhood in general. And so those are, that's one way you can do is just through a prayer walk. Or maybe for you, it's a, maybe you just develop a prayer spot, right? A location where you're like, this is, this is my office. So for me, obviously, sometimes this is my prayer spot. It's where I feel comfortable. Uh, for others of you, maybe it's, maybe it's your kitchen dining room table. 
I just grab your coffee and you sit down at your table and that's where you feel at peace. Uh, maybe it's your your patio outside. Like for me, it's also become my thing where I've I've now gotten some some bird feeders and I'm I'm filling them up each day and I'm putting them all around my my patio. And as long as I'm not like chasing off the squirrels like an angry crazy person, which I'm also doing, um, it's peaceful for me. I can look at the birds. I can read my Bible. I can just talk with God. It's my it's my prayer spot. Um, for you, maybe again, and maybe it's a deer stand out in the woods. Maybe it's a boat fishing out in the lake. Maybe it's a recliner in your living room. Find find your spot, wherever you feel comfortable. Um, the last one I have is, is a prayer list. But hey, sometimes when we make a list of what we're praying for, so we have a family member that shares something, write it down. Or we're going through something, write it down. Like, it can be big, it can be small. Just begin to write those things down because the cool thing about a list is it's it's very specific. And sometimes when we're very specific, we're more willing to intentionally sit down and go through that list. Um, there was a a youth group friend of mine that I saw her post on Facebook a few years ago, right, that she was she was out just mowing her yard and she had her prayer list down where the petals were. And I was like, that's so cool, right? She's got her spot and she's got her list. I thought it was, it was very creative. Maybe that's what you do is, is just do it as you mow your yard. Look, the peace we're looking for is within our reach with prayer. Like, will we ask for it? Like, when we get anxious and when we get worried that's our cue to pray like that's where the peace is and so we can continue to drag our heels through this time or we can talk with our father right and just tell him everything that we're going through our father who's created us who loves us man who who saw the sin in our lives and, and saw that it separated us from him but he loved us so much that he wasn't willing to leave us that way that he would send his son Jesus down to show us how to live life and to eventually give his life on a cross to die for our sins. The man, but not for no reason. Again, it's so that we could have this relationship with our father again. Like that's that's the father we're talking about. I'm not an expert on prayer. Many of you honestly could pray circles around me. But the way I read it and the way I see Paul's words is like we've we've always got a choice. Like in every circumstance, I can choose to, to raise a fist or I can choose to talk to my father. One is going to bring worry and the other is going to bring peace. Which one do you want? Let's pray. Father, I'm so thankful that you're a God that just didn't create this world and create life and give it to us and then just leave us. Just leave us to do whatever we're going to do and to go through whatever we're going through. And now you're your father that cares. And Father, that, that, that changes the way I live my life and that changes the way I interact with you because I know how much you love us. So as we continue to go through everything that we're going through as a world, a, a world that's seeing COVID-19 just kind of run rampant, and as we get anxious or we get worried and we're not sure what the next steps are, man, way we begin to feel comfortable coming to you, knowing that you're not judging us or you're not frustrated with us, that you love us, that you want peace for us. We thank you for Jesus and we thank you for the cross and how that enables us just to just to sit here and be able to talk with you, knowing I don't need I don't need some religious person. I don't need some specific church building to be in. But right here, right now, right where I'm at, I can just be honest with you and open my heart. We thank you for that. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.